Evening. YouTubers, bless you tonight. All right, I got a Bible study on Mars tonight. Um, NASA just landed the rover. Did you see that last week? I see you guys aren't reading the science part of the newspapers. <laughs> We've got a rover on Mars now. It roams around looking at stuff. And the first thing it picked up was uh, wind. There's wind on Mars. Can you believe that? So I thought, wait, why not? I'll do it. Is my mic on? Is the other mic on? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, hey, welcome to the uh, Arizona Deliverance Center. Here's my new radio schedule. It's changed. Uh, I've decided to try some different markets. And uh, these are the new times. Uh, I'm on uh, every day of the week now, different times, trying to catch up with Dave Middleton. Can't do it. He's way ahead of me. Uh, the radio shows are always on the website on Omni FM. You can check those out. I'm on uh, Secular Internet Radio Sunday nights at 9 o'clock. Back up to 2,700 listeners. That's still a little lower than it was before I got sick. So I think it was 3,100. Almost caught back up. If you shop on Amazon and you'd like to help us, they will donate 1.2% of everything you buy to us. Just put in our uh, charity name, Hardcore Christianity. Same thing with Good Search, if you switch over from Google. Tonight's teaching is uh, broadcast on our uh, YouTube teaching channel number one, House of Healing AZ. Miracle Lester still available? Send me an email. Be happy to send them to you. I just posted a video on my Facebook page of a woman that got healed of MS after she did the uh, miracle list. And they took a video of her walking around normal. So I know that thing works. But unfortunately, it doesn't work if you won't do it. YouTubers, remember your terror cells. You're to terrorize the devil by opening up a secret group in your church to pray for the sick. Thank you for your donations. The boxes are on the doors as you leave. God bless you. You can donate on the website, too. And the three books that I wrote are in the bookstore. One on mental illness, how to cure it. One on divine healing, and the other on Exposing the devil. Uh, as uh, Karina said, we'll be in Los Angeles later this month on Skid Row in the morning at 9 o'clock, and then we'll be at the, this church in the afternoon at 2 o'clock. We closed down our healing and deliverance room. Uh, the response was great, so we decided to move it to Thursday nights. It'll be in the uh, small sanctuary here. Every Thursday night, 7 o'clock, no appointment necessary. Rick Katz going to coordinate it for us. So that should go well. Okay, Mars. Mars. The last 20 years or so here in America, this place starting to look like Mars. Man, this is a, we're cracking up. Uh, I never saw so many sick people running around. Mental illnesses are shooting through the roof. Politicians are losing their minds we're seeing it so much hatred out there lust and perversion is running amok in this country this this place is starting to seem like it's mars but there's another mars in the bible let's go through it for a minute all right acts chapter 17 as usual paul got ran out of another town and he ends up in athens what is athens that was the uh, you know the las vegas of nevada it was the biggest city, the main city in Greece, right? And he's hanging around Athens. He's walking around uh, the town, and he starts to notice something here. It says his spirit was parax uno, agitated, stirred up, revived. As he walked around, uh, frustrated, 
when he saw that there were so many idols in Athens and he says he uh, went into the synagogue and by the way that's Jewish Jews with the Jews and the devout persons in the marketplace daily he met with them and says disputing idols idol worshiper what's that telling you the Jews as usual had backslidden again and gone into idolatry in Greece and uh, Paul's trying to get him out of it and he says certain philosophers philosophers is the Greek word for philosopher it means people who are fond of wisdom I took an introduction to philosophy course in college didn't know what it was about but you had to take introductory classes when I got out of high school we weren't sure they were going to stop drafting people. You know where they were drafting them? <laughs> Vietnam. And the boys were kind of starting to come home by the time I got out. I thought, well, I'm not going to chance this. So I, they said your draft number, chance of being drafted would drop if you were a full-time student. So as soon as I graduated, I immediately enrolled and became a college boy. You had to have at least 12 credits. One of my credits was introduction. Philosophers, because I was fond of wisdom. That's why I went. <laughs> it worked. I, I didn't get drafted. I was never drafted. Yeah. Anybody remember Vietnam? You think things are crazy now? Wow, was that nuts. People were going over there and getting killed for nothing. When I say nothing, I'm saying nothing. Zero. Five hundred dead bodies a week for nothing. Can you say Afghanistan? Wow, I can't believe America got involved in that again after the. Oops, I started to drift off there. Stop. Some said, "What will this babbler say?" say? Sper Spermologus is a weird word, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> The concept was in that word, it actually technically means means a seed picker. And it was a, it was a bird that would, like all birds, go along the ground they picking seeds, you know? And they equated that to male sperm. Because males spread their sperm and birds picked these seeds, and so they called it somebody who was Spreading and picking up different thoughts and doctrines and teachings and idol idol worshipers is the way they came to that. It's a weird word. And he says, "What is, what is this?" He seems to be a setter forth of strange gods. Now that was mistranslated in the King James Bible. Xenos Dominion means means uh, foreign demons. And it's funny because the, in the Corinthians, Paul told the Corinthians that all the gods of the Gentiles or the nations were actually what? Demons. He said they're demons. That's what he called them. So all the gods of the other religions, Paul said, were demons. Because he said there's only one God. There's only one baptism. There's only one gospel. There's only one Savior. There's only one Spirit. That's what Paul said. And there's only one God and Father who is above all and in you all, he said. And everything else, he said, was a demon. Mother Mary's a demon. 
Allah. Demon. Hindu gods. Buddha. Who else? Another one. John Smith. That's my neighbor. What's that? This guy's got problems with our neighbors. Rick here. Let's get rid of that guy. He preached to them Jesus, the resurrection. They thought, they thought that was that he was teaching about demons. They'd never heard anything like that. They couldn't believe it. It was the wildest story they'd ever heard. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Three days later, a resurrected from the dead. They thought it was demons. Acts 17 again. They took him, epilobotomy means to physically take him over here. It didn't mean they took him by saying, you know, just go down yonder and then turn left and then go. If you're in Missouri, anybody from Missouri? You are? Oh, you know this then. People in Missouri, when they give you directions, they say, oh, yeah, you go down here and then you turn left at the at the cactus thing, and then you turn right at the stick, and then you say, well, actually, well you know, you can't get there from here. <laughs> That's what they tell you. you know, I'm from Kansas. I, I know all about people from Missouri. Well, they, they, this wasn't that. They actually took him. They were so enthused and excited over it. They took him and took him over there. Physically took him. Okay. You can tell they're all jacked up about it. They bought, brought him to Areopagus. What is that? That was the Supreme Court of Greece. Where's our Supreme Court? It's not by John Smith's house. It's in Washington, D.C. Now, the Supreme Court is the highest court of the land here in America. All other courts are beneath them, correct? And at the bottom is traffic court. You ever been in traffic court? <laughs> he says, we want to know what you're talking about here, this new doctrine. We want to hear more about it, he says. And this was an actual picture of part of Mars Hill. Can you imagine that? Here it is again. They took him to Mars Hill, and right next to it was the Supreme Court of Athens. It's right here. This used to be all built up here. It's all ruins now. There was one of the front, there's the front entrance to it right there. And then next to it was the temp the temple of the Supreme Court of Athens and the center of idolatry. In Greece. Here's another view of it. It's all ruined now. Here is part of the temple uh, where they had idol worships. They had hundreds of different gods in Greece. And here's the stadium that they held their services in. Kind of like the Colosseum down here on McDowell. About the same size. Things huge. The temple of the gods, it was called. It says, you bring certain strange things to our ears. We want to know what this means, they said. So they took him over to the Supreme Court. The Athenians and the strangers spent their time in nothing but telling or hearing some new thing. And that's what they were looking for. Something brand new. So they got all excited about it. Here in America, we've had Christianity overload here. And nobody really cares about it anymore. It's a story everybody's heard over so many times. It's lost its value. If you hear something over and over and over again, and you don't do anything about it, it becomes nothing to you. It's just like another thing. 
you know right now here in America People are turning on Christianity like you can't believe It seems like they hate Christianity now it Seems like they hate Jesus People are pitching a fit over a nativity scene, but nobody ever says anything about Muslims Nobody criticizes Muslims, but Christianity is trash from pillar to post now. It's amazing how the sentiment has just shifted in just 10 short years. Quite remarkable. Christianity is really being trashed now here in America. Why? Hey, people have heard it so much, and it's a religion of peace. You don't want to start trashing Muslims. You know what? You get your house blown up. So Christianity has turned the other cheek. So trash that religion and Besides that in America Christians don't care about anything. They're not going to do anything about it Whatever So they just trash it, it means nothing anymore Because you can't trash uh, Islam you, you get in trouble bad trouble So these guys want to hear something new okay? and Paul stood in the middle of where Mars Hill up on that hill He said men of Athens he says I perceive That in all these things you are too superstitious as I passed by and beheld your devotions Sabaspa means something that you adore That is a huge problem for Christianity in America people are Put everything ahead of God. I mean, you name it. God's down here. Career, vacations, fishing trips, family, sport, I mean, you name it. Everything is adored beyond the Lord. It's weird here. Christianity's weird here. He says, I looked by and I saw all these things that you're devoted to, all the things that you adore, right? He saw all these statues of different gods, head busts, all kinds of stuff was in Athens. He said, I, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. That's the Greek word, agnostos, where we get our English word, right, agnostic. What is an agnostic? I don't know. You can't know. Nobody knows. I don't know. You don't know. That's an agnostic. What's an atheist? An atheist does know. There is no spirit world. There's no God. There's no demons. There's no angels. There's no nothing. They do know. All y'all are nuts. <laughs> That's how they see you. You're an idiot. You're a stoop, superstitious buffoon who uh, is a weak person who clings to their religion and their guns because you're a gutless loser and you can't stand up on your own two feet. You wuss. So you cling to some Mickey Mouse religion, which is not real, it's all fake. Atheism. The agnostic, they should be fighting the atheist. Wait a minute, you don't know that. Yes, I do. No, you can't know that. I know that. See there? An atheist and an agnostic can't get married. <laughs> Too many arguments. Now, in Athens, like it, like in India, for example, in several other countries, most of the Middle Eastern countries, you cannot visit there and then bring in some other god. That's illegal. You got to get special permission to tell somebody something new. Yeah, in India, for example, I had some friends of mine. They were related to one of my wives uh, ex-wives 
<laughs> they came up with this cockamamie concept. Now, I'm not making this up. I make up most of the other stuff up, but this I'm not. <laughs> they got involved with this church. And I'd never even heard of it before. So I thought, oh, wow, this sounds like a cult. They said, we have, we're trying to raise money to go to India to live there and make friends with the Indians. I said, what are you going to do after you get there? No, we're just, we're just going to be friends with them. And uh, I said, well, you, you're, this is a religious group, right? You're going to be preaching the gospel like missionaries? Uh, no, no, we can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. That's illegal. We'll get thrown in jail. I said, what are you going over there for? We're just going to make friends and show them that we're nice people. And then when they ask us about our Christianity, we can tell them. But they have to ask us first. Then it's not illegal. I said, where did you come up with this idea? Well, that's how this organization runs it. We, we go over there and we rent a house. We move in and make friends with the neighbors. I said, well, that's totally unscriptural. That, that's not a missionary venture. It doesn't make any sense. So they go over there anyway, spending thousands of dollars. I said, I, the oldest daughter breaks her hip. The husband starts to crack up. He can't adjust to their lifestyle. He can't adjust to the poverty. He can't adjust to the neighbors, although they're nice people. And he can't adjust to them bending over backwards to help all these Indians. The Indians that were Muslims, they let them use one of the bedrooms for a prayer room. I said, you, you got to be kidding. You're, you're letting demons come into your house. No wonder your your husband's losing his mind and your daughter's injured. You, well, to make a long story short, you couldn't stay over there if you didn't have both couples there. So the husband cracked up. A stress-related illness came over him, and he had to come home. So that shut that whole system down. But they'd made a lot of friends there. I didn't make that story up. That was a religious organization that sponsored that trip. I am not kidding. And it was about 12, 10, 12, something, 14, 15, something, $20,000 cranked on that. See? And I told him, I said, listen, yeah, I'm not part of the family anymore. I, I know that. But if you pay me 20 grand, I, I'll be your friend. <laughs> I mean, I offer, I'm trying to help. I'm a helpful person. So Paul, divinely inspired, looks at this plaque and he sees unknown God. Okay, so I, I can talk to them about Christ because I'm going to reveal the unknown God to them and I'm not going to get arrested because it's a God they already have. Had he come in with a new God, he would have gotten thrown in prison. Wouldn't be able to help anyone. Okay, he says, this one here I want to reveal to you, he says. Whom therefore you ignorantly, what? Yes, a veil. Hold in adoration and reverence. You do it ignorantly. He said, I'm going to tell you who that God is. And I won't be getting arrested because you've already got him. And I'm your friend. <laughs> Listen to these divine truths. They're fantastic. He says, God made, now these are Gentiles, not Jews. God made the world and everything in it. 
Seeing that he is the Lord of heaven and earth, he does not dwell in temples made with human hands. Because right next to Mars Hill is the Supreme Court and the Temple of the Gods that I showed you that picture of. So they've got all their gods inside a temple. And Paul is explaining to them that the real God is too big to be put in a temple. Since he already made everything, you can't keep him in a little temple. And if he made the universe and the heavens and the earth, that temple over there doesn't make any sense. And there's an actual picture of it. See, this is the earth here, but that's a bad, that's a uh, incorrect picture. I guess it's flat. <laughs> there's the universe. The God who made the universe can't fit in a church building here or in a temple. He too big for that, Paul says. I'll get a different uh, earth there and get a flat one next time. But. So I, there it is again. What he's saying is, the God who created the universe is too big to live in that place. Since he made everything. Right? Neither is he worship, is he worshiped with men's hands as though he needed anything. What do you usually do with your idols? Well, you want to be good to them, you want to please them, you want to get on their good side, you want them to like you. Very, very, very similar to a dating service. <laughs> so what do you do? Yes, sir. You bring them gifts. You bring God, your God, your gift. And you bring them necessities. Whatever your God needs, you Help him out and you bring it to him. You bless him with it or her. Correct? Well, Paul's saying, look, now listen to me. God who made everything doesn't need anything from you. See his logic here? These are Gentile idol worshipers. Seeing he gives to all life, breath, and all things. So since he already gave you everything and made everything, there's nothing you can give him he needs. What's he doing there? He's appealing to their common sense. He has made, this is interesting, all people of one blood, of all nations, and he made them to dwell on the face of the earth. What's that mean? We all came from Noah. That means we're all related. That means if you've got half a brain, there's no racism. There can't be any racism if I'm related to you. If I see blacks as inferior to whites, how can that be if I'm related to the black person? Doesn't make any sense. And Paul's saying everybody's related. We all came from Noah. He has determined the times appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. What's he talking about now? Genesis. The Tower of Babel. God switched everybody's language. So if you don't know Portuguese, you don't even know what to call the hammer. Hand me that. You can't even say that. Why? You don't know Chinese. So what do you got to do? Well, all the Chinese people got together at ba the Tower of Babel. All the Latinos got together. All the Indians got together. I'm making this up where I'm going, but <laughs> all of the people who had the same language got together. Duh. Why? Because human beings like to communicate with each other. They like 
social media <laughs> and it says in Genesis that God scattered human beings all over the planet that's how they got from the Middle East to Antarctica now the people that drew the short straws they they got ended up in Antarctica the ones that got the better draws ended up in Hawaii. <laughs> but anyway, however that worked, the Bible says God spread humans around the planet. That's how they got there. Somebody didn't swim from the Mediterranean Sea to Florida. Didn't happen. God did it, he says. I said that they should seek after him if Ara, if they conclude they might feel after him and find him. What's he saying there? God who made everything in the universe, God who created everything in the universe, wants you to hunt him down. Why? He only wants people to come to him who have free will. He doesn't want to force anybody to serve him. He wants volunteers. And Paul said, hey, God is standing right here from everybody. What's that mean? He's omnipresent. That means he's everywhere at once. How does he do that? I don't know. I don't know, but the Holy Ghost can heal somebody here tonight and somebody in Australia at the same time. How does he do that? I don't know. The Holy Ghost, yes. How's he do it? I don't know. That's amazing. Okay. Then he says, in him we live and move and have our being. What's he saying? Hey, listen. Now he's talking about God's what? His omnipotence. God's power. God's sovereignty over the planet. He's saying this unknown God you ignorantly worship is the God of the universe and he has complete sovereignty over it. He can do this and nobody can stop him. He can not do that and nobody can force him. What's he doing here? He's appealing to their he knows these people are thinkers. They're Gentile thinkers and they like to think about religious things. They like idolatry. They like the spirit world. They've got everything there. All kinds of religions, all kinds of mystics, all kinds of people that believe in the supernatural. And they all wanted to hear something new. Why? Because none of the other gods fulfilled 100% of their needs. There was always deficits. The unknown God could fulfill their needs. As, you, as your own poets, have said he's talking about a guy named Aratus. He says we are his offspring. Genos means generational. Human beings were created like a, ge a generation that goes back to God. If you run all the way back to your very beginning, where would you end up? Mount Ararat. Eight guys fell out of an ark. And I'll tell you what, they did not smell that good. Can you imagine 40 days? Wow. Mm. What does that mean? Your distant relatives stunk. What's he trying to say there? Hey, God created humanity and all of our generations go back to him, is what he's saying. 
we are his offspring As much then as we are the genos offspring of God generationally we ought not to think of the Theos what is that? That's what we call the Trinity The Trinity is in this order Father Son Holy Ghost Neither one of them are better than the other one. There's just a structure to it And they don't get out of their structure same thing with what family Hold on ladies Father sorry Mother Rugrats <laughs> And God said hey, that's the order of the family none of the family members are better than any other family member But God is a God of order and structure Okay. When you don't have order and structure you have chaos okay. and If you do any family counseling I have over the years when this structure is jacked up The family's jacked No offense We should not think of the Godhead the divine divinity like stuff he created Gold, silver, stone, all that stuff. He's telling them, hey, these things you built here, that can't be God since God himself created everything. He couldn't be one of these. They can't create anything. And he said, Acts 17, verse 30, the times of this ignorant, God winked at. Who read him? What does that mean? He allowed it to go. He let it go. Why? The cross of Calvary. He let it go for thousands of years. Why? Because God, at the appointed time, fixed the whole mess. And from that moment on, he no longer winks at idolatry and demonic lies since the truth has completely come. The truth had not completely come for Moses, Samson, Enoch, Noah. They all had only a portion of the truth. Now, because of the cross of Calvary, God no longer winks at or allows the other to continue. Now he commands all men everywhere. To, oh, I hate to say this word because it, it causes Christians to have rashes. Matano ale means to, remember what it means? It was a military term, you know? It means to. Okay. Christians here in America don't like. To repent okay? Because they see Christianity like our country a democracy See it's not a democracy in Sudan Or Saudi Arabia, there's no democracies there right you get out of line You get Murdered and chopped up and put in suitcases and taken out of an embassy that's what happens there. Why? It's not a democracy. They don't vote there. Saudi Arabia, the kingly tribe runs the country. Here in America, we vote. Let's take a vote on it. In politics, they vote, but they cheat. But anyway, it's still a vote. It's some form of voting, even though there's a lot of, it's all cheat, a lot of cheating. Christianity Christians in America think think is a a democracy That's why it's so screwed up It's not a democracy okay. 
you got to follow orders or people die. You don't get to decide what's right and wrong. What? Let's all vote on it. There's no voting. Getting a Christian to change is like clearing up a bad case of Ebola. <laughs> you can sit and talk to a, some Christians till you turn blue in the face. And I mean, that's, that's true. If I was an African American, I'd turn blue in the face. <laughs> I don't care who you are. You turn blue. It is so painful. Families vote. Dad's an idiot. Let's vote on it. Who wants to go to Burger King? Who wants to go to Taco Bell? Let's vote on it. My wife's not here tonight. When she was young, give you an idea how bad it was. Her mother, uh, She's not here. Her mother was desperate to have kids and couldn't have them. So she had children late in life. She had a son and she had a daughter. Karen was the daughter. The mother was so happy to have the kids that she was overprotective of them. And she was afraid something would happen to them. So and she tried to make them happy all the time. When you try to make all the people happy all the time, you end up with none of the people have happy. Nobody's happy. What she used to do is get in the car and say, let's go eat. And the son would say, I want Burger King. Karen would say, I want Taco Bell. So the mother would drive to Burger King, get a meal for her brother, then go to Taco Bell and get a meal for Karen. Start, starting to get an idea of what I live with. Are you? Uh, yeah. Uh huh. That's a person that likes to be catered to. Uh huh. And I got problems, don't I? I'm not really the cater to type. That ain't good. You see, if you cater to everybody's interests, you end up hurting everybody. Because that's a, that's, that's a diluted democracy. Right. Everybody's voting on what they want, and you're trying to meet everybody's needs and then ruining everybody in the process. In Christianity, there's none of that. This is God's word, and you do it that way. I do. I say that all the time in counseling sessions. I I try and say it gently, but it doesn't matter whether you thump it out or you love it out. It's the bottom line is, it has to be done that way. Period. And if you don't like to be told this is how it's done, you're not going to fit in. You're going to fail. You won't repent. You won't change. So what does God do? Because he loves you. He lets you do it your way. You got free will. You do it your way. Go ahead and marry him. Go on. Oh, what happens then? Oh, you're drinking again. Why? See, you had to be a big shot and open up your mouth. You had to do it your way.
it's not a democracy it's a loving monarchy it's not like Saudi Arabia where you get out of the line they assassinate you chop you up and put you in a bucket okay that's their business father would never do that now God requires everyone to repent That in the popular message you won't hear that at the mega church, but You'll see it here Why Because hey Ortizzo God has determined a time for you There is a time coming for you when you have to answer for your life. Oh, you got to be kidding. I am not. You have to answer for your life as a Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. You have to answer for your life as a sinner at the great white throne judgment. What you do now, how you act now, what you say now is being recorded in eternity. Here's the best thing to do. Brother Mike, I heard what you said, and you know what? I've screwed up so much you wouldn't even believe it year after year, decade after decade. I hear you. I get it. Change now. Because you're going to die here. Why not change and do what's right and then die? Why screw up all the way to the end and die? Why do it? Grace and mercy is staring you in the face. You have every opportunity tonight to change. Every opportunity. You've had so many chances, it's been unbelievable. You've had one chance after the other. As the good Lord on Judgment Day will say, Hey, there, there's no blood on my hand. I gave you chance after chance after chance to change as a person. You had every opportunity to change. What's he going to do? Man, Jehovah is a just God. Justice requires judgment. If he lets you off, then he's as sinful as everybody else. He's playing favorites. He can't do it. You got to answer. You got to answer. She doesn't get off. That's American justice. This guy gets hosed, that one gets paid off. That's America. No, that's not divine justice. Divine justice requires every person be treated the same. Correct? It's God's equity. And God has picked out a day to do it. There's a day picked out for you. What day is that? Well, he's not going to tell you. Why? Well, one guy said to me, "How does this Christian? I don't, I don't understand it, brother mine. Can you explain it to me?" Well, I'll try. I'll try. Well, how, how come? How come uh, a lot of these people get the sin all their life and then they get saved when they're Dying in the hospital. That don't seem fair. I said, you're not understanding the concept of it. The soul that sinners that shall die, whatever you sow, that's what you'll reap. You don't get to sin. It's not like it's a tremendous benefit for sinning. That's what the guy said to me. He couldn't understand it. He said, this doesn't make any sense. I don't want to get saved now. I want to keep sinning for a while. I said, dude, you don't get to pick the moment you die. That can catch you off guard. 
huff. I got a huff and he bolted out. See, when you get a huff, somebody's going to bolt on you. You ever seen that? Anybody married? You get that huff and boy, huff. Dude, you're in the room by yourself standing. A day is coming, friend. God has determined it. And guess what? It's a, it's a scary day. Because it's a day of righteousness. I'm a, deathbed repentances, I've had a few. They're fantastic. They're great. You know, the person screwed their whole life up and repented on their deathbed. You know, I'd like to have one a day. I, I, I love them. But that person... There's no rewards and glory for that person when they die. Yeah, they, they, they make it to heaven. And that's great. And that's what we want. 100% for it. But there's no, there's no rewards. Many Christians are going to die with no rewards or little rewards. The overcomers are the ones who are going to rule in the next life. There's levels of Christians in glory. Most people don't think don't know that. Yeah, to them heaven is everybody's got a white robe to wear. Probably a little hat. They all look alike. They roam around eating angel food cake. That's our concept of heaven. That is not true at all. The Bible doesn't say that. We don't even stay in heaven. You only go there temporarily. We all live here on the planet Earth in the New Jerusalem. And the overcoming Christians are the ones that rule everything. The non-overcoming Christian don't. But they're there. So we want everybody there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything negative about it. I'm saying you have every opportunity to be an overcomer and a ruler in the new world order. The real one. But you must change now. You must repent now to do that. That's why we do deliverance around here because demons cause people to live disruptive, unproductive lives. What does that yield in the end? Someone who barely gets saved if they get saved at all. All their work is what? Hey. Stubble, poopy. It's all nothing, and it's all burned off. They go into the new world order, no, no rewards, no authority, no. Come on now. Why do this Christian thing and end up a nothing and a nobody? I don't understand. That concept makes no sense. You need to change now. You have every opportunity to change as a person now. Don't be like the people of Athens. They all died and went to hell. He has given assurance to all. How did you do that? Through the cross and the resurrection of Christ. That's the thing that generates your faith in God. God paid for your sin. God paid your penalty. God gave you a second chance. It was all him. It was nothing of you. You did nothing to earn it. You did nothing to get it. God gave it to you. And he also gives you a measure of faith to believe. Oh, not come that. That can't be true. Charles Manson no, when you don't know, you weren't there when Charles Mann was five, six, seven years old. Okay, we only saw him when he was insane. He raised him from the dead. That's the trigger for your faith. Not like all these other idols in this temple. See what he's doing? When they heard about the resurrection, of the dead, some people mocked him, started laughing at him. 
right parable of the sower Rejection is part of the gospel It is it comes with the system Everybody gets rejected What did Jesus tell you to do when you got rejected he said hey Kick this dust off your feet Delete that house and just simply go to the next one <coughs> chill Everybody gets rejected including Paul Others said we will hear this matter again. There's the gospel You throw the seed out these people respond These people don't this group is usually larger than that group. That's how the system works. There's no reason to be hurt or upset over it. That's how it works. Most people are not going to change. They're not going to repent. They're not going to be saved. They're not going to listen. So Paul left. Listen. Some people you minister to at some point you got to cut them off Because they become Time suckers They try to suck the life out of you They want to wear you half out Some people you just have to let go It's not a sin to do that he left However, certain men clave to him. That means <laughs> that's an old King James term. What's that mean? Yeah, they stuck with him. They're still hanging around him. He had a posse, as they would say now. Among among them was Dionysus. Who was that guy? That was an interesting verse. He was one of the men. Judges of the Supreme Court in the temple One of the big shots Stayed It's unusual Supposedly that was his wife there, but we don't know They're guessing man these idols of Athens. They had hundreds of them hundreds of them and so did Egypt who were they? Hapi was what? The god of the Nile. What what did Jehovah do to that? Turned it into blood. Hecate. The goddess of fertility. Represented by frog. Why? Frogs are hardcore breeders. They breed more than rabbits. What did Jehovah do with them? What happened? Yeah, there was frogs everywhere. They woke up one morning and there were frogs all over them. Frogs all over the wall, frogs all over the floor. Can you imagine having frogs in your pants? What is going on? Somebody get Moses back in here and let's get rid of these Jews. I'm not walking around with frogs in my pants. That, that's it. That's too far. You've gone too far. Geb, who's that? The God of the earth. He was the God that blessed the earth for the Egyptians, caused it to grow and feed and so on. Represented by lice, meaning lice is everywhere, growth is everywhere, things are great everywhere. What happened there? That was worse than the frog one. You imagine having lice all over your body. If you just have some life in your lice in your hair, they won't let you come to school. You gotta stay home. A lot of kids go to the store and get one of those lice kits because they don't want to go to school. Kefri, what's that one? 
the God who created the world. What happened to him? It was represented by a fly. What was God telling these Egyptians? Oh, you like flies? Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. That happened to me when I was a kid. I was sitting at the table and we lived with my granddad. And he was retired at the time. And uh, my sister and I and my mother moved in after my dad left. And so, to be honest with you, Grandpa wasn't in the mood for kids anymore. <laughs> Particularly me. He had some choice names for me and a few for my sister. She never got over them. Uh, anyway, uh, every night he would say, what do you want for dinner? And we would always tell him the same thing. And he got so sick of it because I always wanted chicken. I'd yell out, chicken. We're having chicken. And I loved ketchup on my chicken. Yeah. Because elite type people like ketchup on their chicken. You know, the run of the mill types here, they don't eat chicken. Ketchup. I want some ketchup. I'm sitting at the table. Granddad shuffles over to the fridge, opens up, grabs a bottle of ketchup. Bottle, it didn't have the plastic. Comes over and goes, here's some ketchup. The whole bottle on my chicken. We pulled a Jehovah. You like flies, do you? Oh, flies protect you, do they? You like frogs? Oh, you want, you're in the mood for a frog, are you? Okay, I'll show you frogs. Hathor, what was that? Yeah, he was the god that helped Egypt, goats, uh, cows, uh, everything, blessing all of their livestock back then. What, what did Jehovah do there? Yeah, I think. They all died off. Oh, oh, you got a God protecting your your sheep, do you? Really? How's that? How about ten thousand? How's that? Not working. ISIS. Yes, we are all well. We're we're all healthy. The great God, Isis. We honor and glorify you. Thank you. Oh, you like Isis, Ari? Do you? You want to be healthy? How about a couple of boils everywhere? You ever had a boil up here and there? In here? Uh, you like boils? Yes, sir. They weren't too healthy after that. Isis took a vacation. How about nut? You got to be nuts to follow this one. Yeah, the, the God who controls, we give you rain, here's your rain, here's your water, we're blessing you, and so on. Oh, you like the sky, do you? Take a look at this one. Hail coming out of the sky like rockets, destroying everything. The structures, the buildings, killing animals, just... What happened to Nut? Well, he's nuts. What about Seth? Who's that? The storm god. Oh, he protects you from storms, does he? I'll send you a storm. Pitch black. Storm of locusts. You ever seen locusts? Back in Kansas, we called them grasshoppers. You ever seen those big grasshoppers? They're creepy looking. And they've got little scales on their legs. So when they jump on you, they're not really hurting you, but it digs in. And then you go like that. What's the, Stop it. You ever seen a bug get on somebody and they're not expecting it? They start freaking out like crazy. Can you have an, a billion grasshoppers in your neighborhood? A billion of them? You gotta be kidding me, man. Who's this one? Oh, he's a sun god. Oh, you like light and sun, do you? 
pitch black couldn't see your hand in front of your face Egypt whole country pitch black How about Pharaoh the seat of power and divinity What happened to him All died they all died Couldn't even save his own son. What was Jehovah trying to do there? He was proving what Paul was kind of trying to prove verbally, he was physically proving none of these demons can save you. That's why Paul said they were all demons. How about to 21st century? There you go. Who's Shiva? Yeah. How about Vishnu? Oh, you need her. Rama. Krishna? Hanuman? Ganesha? Wisdom, wealth, success? Tony Robbins? <laughs> you notice these gods all kind of look alike? Are you watching? Look at these pictures. It's weird. They need to create different looking ones. How about Brahma? Creator of the of the universe, creator of the world. Indra. Oh, she'd be great at a party. How about Yama? Probably moved to Yuma. The Lord of Death. Agan. Matha? Not Martha, but Matha. This is the supreme goddess of Hinduism that created the other gods who then had offspring and then took over. What are all these things? Oh boy. Here's Islam. Allah and Muhammad. Here, who said Buddha earlier? There he is. He's big. Yeah. He had eating issues. The ancient Greeks had gods, right? How about this one? These gods, I think, were better than the Hindu gods. They got a little more, you know, spit and vinegar with them. Zeus was a good one. He was the king of the gods. Okay. Proceeded. Earthquakes, the ocean. What's the point of that? The idea is that this god would protect you if you were traveling, if you were on a boat, on a ship, or what have you. That they, they created these gods for all different all kinds of different purposes. Athena, wisdom, Hades, the god of hell, Taurus. How about Apollo? Everybody's heard of him. God of light. Artemis. God, Aphrodite, Hermes. Transitions mean transitioning from the spirit world to the current natural world. Hey, we've got them covered. Our gods are different here, though. Okay? Our gods are a lot different than the other gods because this is the greatest country in the world. And this place is fantastic. You know, I can stand up there, up here, and teach this kind of a teaching and not be arrested. I could never do this in China. Can you imagine that? I would get in so much trouble in China. I was going to visit there, but I canceled my ticket. America's got gods too, don't they? Yeah. One is fame, fortune. Material things like cars and homes. I believe those are the two biggest expenditures people have, are they not? House and car. Pretty much. Everybody wants a bigger house, a nicer home. Gambling is a god. Taking vacations, that's a god. 
drugs, escort services, sex. Medication, porn, here's a big one, sports. Well, these aren't gods. Nobody's worshiping these people. Well, that's true, but how much time you spend doing something says a lot about you. All these things are things that suck your time. Which is what they do with idols. You have to spend a certain amount of time serving an idol. And you have to sacrifice your time to do it. What's God? Satan's number one? God. He has wasting your time. By far. Number one. Here's a little chart illustrating what people do with their time. Wow. TV is a big one. Well, that's changed a little bit. Check this out. In your brain, you have a cerebral cortex. Did you know that? Sure you did. That's how you are thinking about what I'm telling you right now, what you're looking at, what you think about, how you perceive things, how you will learn languages, how you use your language. Most of the information is processed in your Cerebral cortex. It's divided into four lobes, correct? Okay. Here they are, the four lobes. Your cerebral cortex is the out, outer portion of your brain. Okay? If you split the brain in half, you would see two things. What? White matter and gray matter. Your gray matter is on the outside of the brain. It determines your intelligence. People who have really good gray matter have higher IQs. The white matter of the brain is inside the brain and all the neurons and the energy and the processing passes through the white matter to the other areas of the gray matter. How your gray matter works, fast, slow, determines your ability to use your mind. A person who is stupid, their gray matter is different from a Rhodes Scholar. Correct? Okay. Check this out. A survey just came out a few days ago. Did you see it on the news? It's the first time we ever got any actual research on what's happening to human beings in the high tech age. It was a $400 million study from the National Institute of Health. They tested 4,500 children, and the results showed that using these devices, video games, iPad, two hours a day causes brain damage to the gray matter of the child's brain. Seven hours a day causes the structural damage to the gray matter. It causes the cerebral cortex of the brain to thin. They took a survey of the multimillionaires that live in Silicon Valley in California. That may be the richest area in the entire country. Not sure about that, but one of them. Okay? In 2017, they did a survey of the people who make all these high-tech devices. Most of them are in Silicon Valley. They're all filthy rich. They did a survey of them. 
907 parents Google provides services to schools Right correct Why are they doing that because they learned something from the tobacco companies back in the 40s the tobacco companies knew that if they got somebody to smoke as a child or a teenager, the earlier they started smoking, they would get them hooked for life. The earlier they started. These high tech multimillionaires in Silicon Valley know that as well. Now, in our society, the average child gets some kind of an iPhone or regular phone, cell phone, at age of 10. Why do they want them to have it at age 10? So they'll get addicted to it. They took another survey of billionaires in these companies. Guess what these people all have in common? The people who make all this technology and they become billionaires off of it guess what they all have Steve nailed it they send their children to schools who do not use high-tech devices they send their kids to schools that use paper and pens and read books. You know why they do that? They know it damages the gray matter of their brains. That might be true, but the scariest part is. The technology that's not made for that, they know is destroying our child, children's brain. And they don't let their kids use it. Seven hours is now causing brain damage and that causes children to develop clinical depression, behavioral problems, fighting, strife, disobedience, rebellion, because they're on a screen of some kind all day long. And they know it. And they don't let their kids do it. I want to ask you a question. These American idols that suck your time out of your life. Hey, these things need to be killed. Your kids, are they sitting there all day on a social media screen? They now know. They now know. It causes brain damage. What's far worse than that is you having idols in your life causing them spiritual damage. What's happening to these children? The demons just enter into their mind. 
right off the screen. It's just like pornography. The lust spirits come right in off the screen. The devil built these people up. He made them billionaires because they are doing what he wants them to do. He blesses anybody who will do what he wants them to do temporarily. YouTubers, it's time now for you to change your life. You need to change your life now. Your time is running out because God has appointed a time and a date for you individually. And before the cross of Calvary, God lets stuff go. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Nobody gets off. Nobody gets off. What's the good news? Hey, grace is staring you in the face tonight. Mercy is staring you in the face. You can save your children. Some of them, it's not too late. You can save yourself. Some of you. It's not too late. Christianity is not a democracy. It's a divine monarchy. And the things that are sucking the time out of your life that you spend doing what? Recreating, working, watching TV, whatever it is, God is calling you to make some adjustments because he sees it as an idol. Whatever you spend your time on is what's important to you. What you do with your time is your free will then determines where you will go and what you will be. It's time to change. It's time to change before it's too late. If you wasted two thirds of your life, uh, I didn't turn my life over the Lord until I was 40. I blew 40 years. Right? Maybe you're like me, you blew 40 years. It's not too late. You can change and make the next 40, so to speak, productive for God. But it's not going to happen if you don't change. And you can change tonight. Let's pray together. Father God, I'm praying tonight for all these calls I get on the ministry line from parents calling asking us to pray for their children. I know what's happening. Their brains are being hijacked by demons and these children are getting brain damage from these high-tech devices they use all day. Google knows about it. Facebook knows about it. Twitter knows about it. Snapchat knows about it. They all know about it. They won't let their children do it. But they're fine if everybody else's children children do it. But you're not that way, Lord. You don't treat people like that. And there's been some people in this room tonight and on YouTube right now who have been spending time in nothingness, wasting their days, wasting their hours, wasting their time. Wasting their lives. There's workaholics listening to me on YouTube. They work all the time. God's calling you to change and repent. There's recreators and sports 
worshipers worshiping football and soccer and all the other sports God's calling you to repent of it and change There are money worshipers here for the love of money is the root of all evil why because money creates access to other sin and other time-consuming and wasting habits Father, I'm asking for forgiveness tonight for my friends. I'm asking you to forgive them. I'm asking you to heal them. I thank you for the people you healed this week and delivered from demons and the counseling sessions. It was wonderful, but that's not good enough. That's past. Tonight is the only thing that's important to me and the only thing important to you are these children of yours. In the name of Jesus. Now just raise your hand if you've been wasting your time on something you need to repent of. We want to pray for you. You've been spending too much time in a certain area. Maybe it's even in an area you're trying to fix somebody or help somebody. And you're spending too much time on a project that's not worth it. They're not responding. They're not listening. Just raise your hand so I can pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now just... If you raised your hand, just stand up. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. If you raised your hand, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. The Holy Spirit wants you to adjust your schedule and give him that time. Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to do that? Just wave at me if you're willing to do that. That's exactly what God wants you to do. He's not telling you that you have to give him all your time. He obviously knows you have responsibilities. No kidding. Jesus was the same way. He had responsibilities. He had things he, that had to be done. God understands that. It's the wasted time that he's focusing on right now. The wasted time. You're putting too much time in something, someone, some process, some project. Something's going on. And you know you're supposed to be turning that time over to the Lord. Am I right? You know you're supposed to be doing it. You're going to do it. You're going to repent of it right now. Will you? Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, have mercy on me. Come on. Lord Jesus, please forgive me right now. Father God, I'm asking you to have mercy on my soul right now. I spend too much time on this and that and this and that, and I see it as a sin now. I know it's a sin now. I saw those phony idols on the screen there the Hindu gods the Greek gods they were all a waste of time they were all a complete waste of time and I'm going to repent of it right now in the name of Jesus father forgive me in the name of Jesus have mercy on me Lord have mercy on me Lord I gave my kids too much time on this these electrical devices and now they're starting to have behavioral problems I'm starting to lose control of my children I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus I'll repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. I hurt my kids. I thought I was helping them. I now see I was hurting them. And I'm going to repent of it right now. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry. Wave at me if you spend too much time on these electrical devices. iPads, iPhones. Too much, too much time on it. Raise your hand there. All right? Now just... Put your hand right on your head like this on both sides of your head. Your cerebral cortex right there is being attacked. Attacked by the phone and attacked by, come on up, ministry team, attacked by demons. The demons are using the phone and using the high-tech device to get into your mind. Once they get into your mind, they try to control your mind. You get a mind control spirit. He gets in, he tries to dominate your thought life. He tries to control how you think. He tries to control what you do, what you believe, how you talk, what you say. Mind control spirits want total control of the person. And they're using these devices as an entry point to get in. As an entry point. They use them. Put your hand on your head there. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I repent of using these devices too much. I'm going to cut this time down and the spirits that already entered my mind, my brain, I command in the name of Jesus to come out 
and loose me now. I repent of it in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you mind control spirit. I command you mind control, controlling my thoughts, pumping my mind full of negative thoughts. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you in the name of the Lord to come out of my head. Come out of my head, I said. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of my head. Come out of my head right this second. Come out of my mind right now. Come out of my mind. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come on out. Leave my mind. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Right now. Come out of my head. Spirit, come out of my head. Come out of my head. Come out right now. Come out of my head. Come out right this second. Come out right now. Get out of my head. Come out of my head. Go. Come out, Spirit. Come out right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Hurry. Come out. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now. Come out of that head right now. Come out right now. Go. Mind control. Come out. Come out. Mind control. Spirit, come out. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of hatred. Spirit of anger. Spirit of rebellion. Mind control. Rebellion. Come out in Jesus' name. Come on out. Right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Come out of the throat. There he is. Here he comes. Come out, spirit. Hurry up. Come out right now. Get out of my head. Come out of my head right this second. Come out of my head. Come out of my body. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out right now. There it comes. There it comes. Go. Come out of there. Come out right now. Get out of that body right this second. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Satan, loose your hold. Satan, come out. Go. Come out. I repent. Say it. I repent. Go. I repent. Come out. Mind control, devil. Mind control, spirit. Come out right now. Hurry up. Come out. Mind control. Mind control. Come out. Mind control. Come out of that body. Come out right now. Mind control. Out. There he is. Keep coughing. Come out now. Negative thoughts. Lies. Negative thoughts. Distorted thoughts. Stupid thoughts. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Quickly. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now in the name of the Lord. Come out of my head. Come out of my head right now. Come out right now. Get out of my mind. Come out of there. Come out of that body. Tell him to go. There you go. Tell him. Come out right now. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Say that. Get out at a girl. Just like that. Come out of my body right now. Go. Come out right now in Jesus' name. Come on out. Fear over her. Come over. Come out of there right now. Fear over my daughter. Fear over my girl. Come on. Worry and fear over my daughter. Come out. Worry about her future. Fear over her future. Come on. Say it. Just cast it out. Come out right now. Out. Get out. Mind control. Come out of my head right now. Get out of my head right this way. Come out, you monster. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out, you monster. Go. Hurry up and go. Hurry up and go. Come on. Go. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Come out. Come out right now. Mind control. Come out of there. Mind control. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Get out of the body right now. Come out. Get out of that brain. Come out of there right now. Come out of my brain, you filthy spirit. Come out of my brain, you filthy spirit. Come out of my brain. Come out of my brain right now, you filthy spirit. Come out of my brain. Out, I said. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. You rotten demon, come out of my brain. Come on now. Jesus, I'm so sorry. Lord, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Just tell him you love him. You forget, ask him to forgive you. He'll come right to you. Holy Spirit, come bless her right now. Holy Spirit, come in right now. Holy Spirit, come in right now. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, dear Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me, dear Lord. Help me, dear Lord. I love you. Heal. 
Save his mind, Lord. Save her mind, Lord. Save her mind. Save her mind. Save her mind. Sweet Jesus, help me. Sweet Jesus, I love you. Sweet Jesus, get out of my head right now. I command you to come out right now. Go ahead. Get out of my head. Migraines, I command you to come out. Migraines, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Migraines, that's not a medical condition. That's caused by a spirit. Migraines, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Mind control. Come out, you. Get out of my head. Mind control. Get out of my head. Go. YouTubers, come on. Put your hand on your head. I command you in the name of Jesus. I bind mind control. The Bible says that if you, whatever you bind on this earth is bound in heaven. Mind control. Come out of my head. I bind your power. I command you to get out of my mind. I can't stop thinking about drugs. I can't stop thinking about sex. I can't stop thinking about my disappointments and my failures. Satan, stop it. Stop it. Stop. Everything's negative. Everything's fearful. Everything's wrong. The devil's controlling my mind. He's got my mind. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Whoever gets the mind gets the rest of the person. Whoever gets your mind gets you. If the demons get your mind, the devil gets you. If the Holy Ghost gets your mind, God gets you. But you must fight for your survival. Come on. Fight it out. Get out. Get out of my body now. Come out now, you filthy devil. Come out of there. Out. Come out of there. Come out there. Come out in the name of Jesus. There you go. Go to my mind right now. Good. Get a mind control. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. What's wrong with her? Like some sadness. Sadness over what? Loss. Loss of her loved one. Her boyfriend? My son. Her Your son dead? He died? What happened? He got ran over. By a car? What was the name? Bobby. Bobby. Is your brother dead? I don't have to say. It was oh. my son is her best friend. Oh, Bobby was your best friend? He got killed? Something hit him and died? Are you sad over that? You are? Um, why is she laughing? She just doesn't know how to um, handle it. Oh, hey, let me... I can help you. Hey, what you're doing is... You're, you're, everybody has a soul, and, and that's where your emotions come out of your soul. And you're, emo you've got scars on your soul, so your emotions are malfunctioning. Go! 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 Her emotions malfunction. Right? Yes. She has inappropriate emotional activity going on when when normal people would go, that's not time for that, so to speak. She, she has an outburst of her emotions in different, different ways. Yeah. Yeah, and it's almost like helter skelter. Big, different. Yeah. Sometimes inappropriate or, or not at the right moment. Right? Now the Holy Spirit can heal heal her soul. You can be healed. She believes that that's what she could. What? She believes that. You believe that? Oh here. Now turn around. Don't look at her. Turn around over here. Watch this. Raise your hands. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I need you to heal my emotions and heal my soul. I need you to help me. Say it. Just talk to me. You stand right in front of you. The lights are off. Nobody can see you. Say it. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry for my sin. And I ask you to forgive me. I'm asking you to forgive me. Please help me. 
Please help me, Lord. I need my soul healed. And at the count of three, I'm going to ask God to heal your soul for you. Are you ready? All right. One. Two. Three. You feel that? What's wrong with you? I'm finding my own healing now. We're healing over what? Just different things, but I'm, I'm feeling that he's made me, God has confirmed to me that he's happy with me, thinks he wants me to continue on the road that I'm in. Mm -hmm. I've accepted and repented from all my sins. Excellent. Yeah, and I give him his heart to him. Yeah, he's very happy with you. You speak in tongues yet? Not yet. Okay. Now just come on over here. Now, this will this process will accelerate dramatically. If you receive your gift of tongues, it's your pr special prayer language. Yes. Okay? I just repeat after me. Bruma Shanda. Kelola. Vakamuna. Borobashe. Vekoba. Notice how easily you were repeating that? That was like nothing. Okay, this time, um, you already have your gift of tongues. It's in your spirit, man, there. You just haven't released it. It's already there. So just repeat after me and then add a few syllables on your own, and then it'll jump start and kind of start coming out. Okay? Any syllable, anything. That right there, perfect. That's it right there. Keep going. Get out of my body. I give you no Good, there it is. It's coming out. Go. Raise your hand because you love him. Now speak it out. Holy Spirit, go. Holy Spirit, go. Go. Holy Spirit, go. Stronger. Go. She's speaking in tongues right now. Good. Listen to her. Holy Spirit, come in. Go. There it is. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come on out. Keep going. This is from Atlanta. Will you say from Atlanta? This lady in Erica. Who are you? Get out. How are you doing? I'm from time. What happened? Can you do it for you? Uh huh. What's what's what you need? No, for this, I didn't know this was that bad. I didn't know that was that bad. So what was bad? To be in this under Oh, the electrical yeah. stuff? Yeah, damages your brain. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay, yes. great. Ready? Yeah. You speak in tongues? Yeah. Go ahead. Louder. Good. Louder. Louder. You get out of my head right now. Come out right now. Good. Come on. Louder. Mind control demons. You come out of that body right now. Good. Good. 
Shandara ma shandara ma. Louder. Hola bala ma shitereve. Louder. Come on. Shandara ma shitereva rava ramo shandara. Mind, I command you to heal. Hora ma shandara va shandara va sandai. Louder. Hora ma shandara shitereve lava. Hora va rava shandara va sire. Come. Hora va shandara va shandai. Louder. Loma ma shandara shiteva la lama. Louder. Ola la lama shandara va shitere mono. Loud. Good girl. Crank it out. That a girl. There you go, Larry. Good. Louder. Hura mo shamba va shandai. Good. Ola ma shandara va silava. Good. Hura ma shandara va silava. Kelo la mo shalo. Good. Yundara mo shiva la 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 ma shandara boy. Hura ma ma ma. Get out of my back right now. Come on, way back. There's a demon in his back. Hundra mo shandara va shitara va ra. Come on. Hurra mo shanta. Okay, ready? Now we'll switch to singing. Rimu shavura, rimu shibula. Good, louder. Rimu shavura. YouTubers, singing in tongues is the highest form of worship known to man. Singing in tongues, demons hate it. Come on, sing with me. Sing with me. Rimu shavelo. Come out, devil! Come out! Come out! Come out, you filthy spirit! Out of that body! Get out of that back right now! Come out of there quicker! There he comes, glory to God! Sing it out now. Satan, lose your hold. Come on, YouTubers, sing with me. Come on now. Singing in tongues draws in the anointing. Okay, sing with me now. Demons hate singing in tongues. Demons hate singing in tongues. Louder. Sing it out loud. Louder. When Rick put his hands on my shoulders tonight, my whole shoulder blade went on fire. You did? Oh, my whole back. Did you, heal? did you get healed or something? Yeah, I curled into the bucket. Well, thanks for taking the hard cases like me. <laughs> yeah, because as you know, the church doesn't. No, you won't be taking them too. You're going to take the hard cases. Huh? Hey, you have a nice anointing. you got to learn to release it. Now, when you sing in tongues, it just starts flowing out of you. Yeah, Try I, I thought that. Try because it. Because one day I had experience that was very strong. Yeah, so well, you have it. You have everything. Just you energy. already have everything. Thank you so much for you got a great ministry ahead of you. You're supposed to use these hands to heal people. Heal, you put them on their bodies and heal them. That's your job. Okay? You got to learn to be a worshiper. Yeah. Okay. This flows out. You have it. I love you. Glad you came. Love you. Clearbridge meeting. Uramore Satan. How'd that go? Huh? I gotta give you something. Okay. Hey. Here. This Bible study will change your life. Okay.
Okay. And then the and speaking in tongues is your ticket to the big time. I was speaking. My okay. sister has it naturally. Huh? My sister, she has it naturally. Has what? The, the power of tongues. She just. No, you have it too. You just haven't released it. I have it. It's I, blocked by your mind. My God. Yeah. No, everybody has it. Every born again Christian has it because they have the Holy Spirit living in them. He has everything. My sister barely walks into that church and she like passes out and starts speaking in tongues. Well, she's learned. She's sensitive to this moving the spirit. Very you can be the same. I want to be like that. Well, you, I just gave it to you. I'm going to do it. That teaches you to be exactly like your sister. You have it. You just haven't been releasing it. You're fine. You you got it. You were doing it up there. I felt it. Hi, sweetheart. Good night, dear. Pleasure. Okay? You, you have it, and that, that'll show you what to do. You just follow those steps, and you'll be killing it. Okay? All right. Love you. Thanks for coming tonight.